In this video, we're going to divide and we're going to focus on integers or whole numbers. So we'll start with a nice and easy number, like 484, and we're going to divide this by 4. So we're using the bus stop method, as we call it. So when we divide by 4, we put the 4 in front and we look at how many 4s fit into 4. There is just 1 and there is nothing remaining. How many 4s would fit into 8? That would be 2 of them and there is nothing remaining. How many 4s into 4? That would be 1 of them. Again, nothing remaining. What if we had 483 divided by 4? So, how many 4s fit into 4? That's 1. Nothing remaining. How many 4s into 8? That's 2. Again, nothing remaining. How many 4s into 3? None of them. 0. But we still have 3 remaining. So, at this point, we've run out of digits, so we're going to put a decimal point, and we can put it here as well. Now we can add zeros, because zeros after the decimal point have no value. So, 4 into 30, that is going to be 7 of them, because 7 times 4 is 28, so we have 2 remaining. Now, again, we can add as many zeros as we want, because that's after the decimal point. So how many 4s into 20? That would be 5 of them, and there is nothing remaining. So the answer is 120.75. Let's try another one. This begs for knowing your times tables. So if you need to brush up your times tables, have a look at some times table videos. So how many sixes fit into eight? That is just one, because one times six is six, and we have two remaining. So how many sixes fit into 20? That would be three of them, because three times six is 18, so there is two remaining from the 20. How many sixes into 24? That is exactly four of them. So how many sixes into two? That would be zero, and we have two remaining. Again, decimal point, and we can add zeros. How many sixes in 20? That would be three of them, which makes 18. And then again, we have a two that is left there. Again, adding a zero, six into 20, Again, three of them, so we've got the three recurring. Let's try another one. And we're going to divide this by nine. So how many nines would fit into seven? That would be zero. But we need to carry over the seven. How many nines into 72? That would be eight. So exactly eight. How many nines into eight? None of them. Eight carried over. How many nines into eighty? That is eight of them, which makes seventy-two. So there is eight carried over. How many nines into eighty-three? That would be nine, because nine times nine makes eighty-one. Two carried over. How many nines into twenty-seven? 
that would be exactly three of them. Now we have a zero in front which we can just take off because we don't write numbers with zeros in front. Let's try one with two digits. So let's divide this by 14. So how many 14s that fit into 82? If you're unsure, you can just keep counting. So 14 and 14 is going to make 28. This is larger than 28, so we need to keep counting. So two lots of 14 in there. If I add another two lots, that would be another 28. So this is 56, which is again smaller than the 82, so we haven't reached that point. If I add another 2, Six and eight is fourteen. Five and one six and the two eighty-four. So basically this is higher now. So I've got to go backwards one step. I need to take away a fourteen or only add fourteen to the fifty-six. So 4 take away 4 is 0, 8 take away 1 is 7. So this now is a 1, 2 and 2, 4, and a 1, 5. So 5 lots of 14 make 70. From the 82, we've got 12 remaining. So now we're looking at how many 14s fit into 124. Our previous working out can help us. So we had here six lots of 14 made 84. Now, if I add another 14, so that is eight, so 98, that is seven lots of 14. What if I add another one now to make it 8? So 8 and 4 is 12, 10, 11, so 112. If I add another 14, this is going to be 126, which is higher than that. So I'm going to stop here with the 8. So how many do I have left? 124, take away 112, that gives me 12. So 12 carried over. Now the question is, how many 14s into 126? And as we said earlier, 9 lots of 14 would make 126. So adding 14 here, 6 two one exactly nine lots so i'll put nine here and cross this out now question is how many 14s into eight that is zero we have run out of digits so we're going to put decimal point in here we have the eight carried over and we can add zeros so how many 14s into 80 let's backtrack so into 80, that was 84. So going to 70, that is five lots. So we have 10 remaining. We can add a zero here now. So 14 into 100. That was 98, so seven lots makes 98 and then we'd have two remaining so we can continue this sometimes it's never ending it's a recurring decimal but as long as you have two digits after the decimal point 
that should be a nice point to stop at. Let's try another example of dividing by a two digit number. So we're going to divide by 13. How many 13s fit into 48? If unsure, 13 and 13 is 26. If you add another 13, it gives us 39. If we try and add another 13, that's definitely going to be higher than 48. So we're going to stop at 3. What do we have left? If I take away 39 from the 48, that's going to leave me with 9. So that's the number I carry over. Now 13 into 91. Again, I can continue here. So if I add another two lots of this or just one, Okay, let's try with one. So that gives me 12. So that's 52. That means I can still continue. So this was number four. If I had another one, I get five, six, 65. We can keep going. So 65 add 13 gives us 78 we can keep going i think so if we try another one eight and three is eleven seven and one is eight and the one is nine so exactly seven lots of 13 make 91 how many 13s into zero that's zero of them we need to write that down nothing carried over how many 13s into five that's again zero but now five carried over we've run out of digits so we put a decimal point here and here and we can add a zero so how many 13s into 50 going back to this four lots make 52 so that is higher than 50 so we're going to stop at three three lots of 13 make 39 so if i take away 39 from 50 i'm left with 11. how many 13s into 110 we've got 91 here can we fit in a 13 that is 4 and that is 10 so 104 of course we can't fit in another one so that would be eight lots of 13 and that would be six remaining we can continue if we want but we've got two decimal places in the answer so that's a nice point to stop at unless the question is asking to round your answer to two decimal places in which case you need to continue with a third digit to determine whether you round up or down. So if that was the case in this question, we'd need to continue here, add a zero. So into 60, we've got 52, so four lots of 13. And so that's the point where we need to stop. And then to round, Looking at the four, we round down. So we keep this as 3,700.38 if the question was asking to round this to two decimal places. Some prefer to use the long division method, which I'm going to use the same numbers to show on the side here. So four, eight, one zero five divided by 13 so it's very much 
similar to what we've just done. So again, how many 13s fit into 48? And you'd go and do the calculation just like we did here. So adding 13 to the 26. So three lots of 13 makes 39. And you'd put three here, just like we had there. And take away 39, which then gives us nine and then you just drop down the next digit so that becomes 91 just like we had here and the question is how many 13s fit into 91 and it's exactly seven of them so take away 91 leaves us with zero now we drop down the next digit which is zero so the question is, how many 13s fit into zero? And that's zero of them, nothing remaining. We drop down the next digit, which is a five. So how many 13s fit into five? That's still zero. So take away zero, we've got five remaining. Now, at this point, we've run out of digits. So we put a decimal point at the answer so we continue just like before we can add a zero now so how many 13s would fit into 50 that would be three of them just like we worked out before so three lots of 13 gives us 39 so taking away 39 from the 50 that leaves us with 11 and we continue again adding a zero and that means we've got to put eight next to the three because eight lots of 13 fit into 110 and so on so the only difference between the two methods is that when it comes to long division you don't do the working out in your head or on a piece of paper next to the calculation, but you just lay it out like this. Whichever method you want to use is perfectly fine, as long as you're comfortable with the method that you're using. It's always useful to know more than one method. And division is one of those really important operations that you're going to need to know how to work out in order to do other calculations and to work with fractions, decimals and percentages and many other topics because in everyday life you use it as well when it comes to money, when it comes to working out cost of a specific item given the total cost of a pack for example so it's something essential to know.